I'm going to use Ballistic Explorer's Drag Analyzer to show you the real difference between the G1 and G7 drag functions. While the G1 and G7 projectiles are themselves quite different in appearance, I'll show you how they're all so similar. Few of even the most experienced shooters know what you are about to discover because they've only seen drag coefficient versus velocity graphs rather than drag versus velocity graphs. The formula for plotting drag coefficient isolates the shape of the bullet from the drag it experiences and doesn't give you an intuitive picture of bullet drag. It would be hard to see from the drag coefficient graph on the left that the bullet drag increases steadily as velocity increases with a large increase around the speed of sound, Mach 1, and then again steadily increases as velocity increases. However, it's easy to see this relationship looking at the drag versus velocity graph on the right. Ballistic Explorer's drag versus velocity graph shows the actual bullet drag for a given drag function, also called a drag model, relative to velocity, air density, the speed of sound, and the bullet's ballistic coefficient so that you get the full drag profile for the bullet and conditions. Developed specifically for ballistics, the graph starts out at a high velocity and decreases going to the right as the bullet goes down range. Also, drag is plotted as a function of ground velocity because bullet velocity is always measured relative to the ground, be it at the muzzle or down range. Shooters are more familiar with feet per second than Mach number, so I'll use that setting. Before we get into the details of the demonstration, I'm going to show you a little bit about Ballistic Explorer. Ballistic Explorer uses three traces. The trace is a complete shooting situation. You can see here we have parameters for the ballistic coefficient, the drag function, muzzle velocity, various other conditions. You can also use other displays, such as the Explorer display, where I can use these sliders to set various parameters. We can also view downrange data in a tabular format over here with the examine display. We'll utilize all these functions as we demonstrate the true story between G1 and G7. I'm going to take a better look at the drag function analyzer. We have here the units displayed in G's, gravitational units. Most people are familiar with gravitational units, G's, such as the G's a pilot might experience in the aircraft. Uh, or even in an automobile when you go around a corner. Uh, G units can be either a unit of force or a unit of acceleration. Here we have in red the G1 drag function with a BC of 1 and we can see at 3,000 feet per second the bullet would be experiencing about 30 G's of deceleration. For the G7 in green here would be experiencing about 15 G's of deceleration. We also have controls where we can adjust the velocity range with these slider controls so we can get a better look at different points of the velocity range. We can see here as we are in approximately Mach 1 how the G1 is a smoother slope and the more streamlined G7 has a more abrupt change. Back in our controls tab we can actually add Mach 1 bars so we can see exactly where Mach 1 is. Okay, I'm going to go back to the Velocity Range tab, and I'm going to set the maximum velocity to about 3,000 feet per second. And we can see here that the drag on G7 is about 15 G's, that's with a BC of 1, and the drag on G1 with a BC of 1 is about 30 G's. So now I'm going to set the ballistic coefficient of G7 to about 0.5. I'm going to go down and use the sliders on the Explore display to do that. We can see it changing here in real time. As I make my adjustments. And here we have it. And now you can see something very interesting from a velocity of about 2800 feet per second down to an 1800 feet per second the drag profiles are nearly identical. And what that means is any prediction that you make with the G7 versus the G1 drag function within this velocity range will be nearly identical. And we can show that by going down to the examine display 
where we can look at the velocity. We are out a thousand yards. You can see there are only about one foot per second difference between trace one and trace two, trace one being G1, trace two being G7. We also can do a right click to bring up our comparator and I'll do the maximum diff between trace one and trace two. And we can see it's 1.7 feet per second at 307 yards. I'm going to go and I'm going to look at drop. And we can see that difference between trace one and trace two is only 0.221 inches at a thousand yards. Now what we want to know is does this ratio of two to one stay the same for different values of BC? I'm going to do a little video magic and I'm going to adjust the G1 to 0.5 and the G7 to 0.25 to keep the same two to one ratio. So here we are back in the drag function analyzer and we can see that the drag has gone up to 60 G's deceleration. So this relationship has stayed the same even though we've changed the BC's to 0.5 for G1 and 0.25 for G7. Let's come down to the examine display here. We see by a thousand yards click velocity. We're down into the 1400 feet per second range where the G1 and the G7 have a difference. They start having a difference in this velocity range. So we're getting 28 feet per second difference. Even though we got that much difference in velocity, we go look at drop again. And if I do the comparator, max difference between trace 1 and trace 2, we'll see it's only 0.354 inches at a thousand yards. And I'm going to look at that in site adjustment units of MOA. You can also do mills. And we see here we have 0 0.034 MOA at a thousand yards. That's smaller than any group size you're likely to get even with a premium barrel and the best ammunition. So in practical terms, there's no difference in predictive power between G1 and G7 in this very important velocity range that many shooters operate in. And this explains why the G1 drag function has served so well for so long. Only until shooters started getting into long range shooting, where we get into these lower velocity ranges, do we start seeing a difference in the predictive power between the G1 and the G7 drag functions? And that's the real story between G1 and G7.